passionate about music. Well, I was thinking the other thing, you must have had quite an interesting life, really, Sam, so far. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, um, let's say it's 25 years in the music business, and then with the modelling, four years, 29 years I've been in the business now. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long, in actual fact, I'm writing the book, <gasps> in between the touring, I'm touring at the moment most of Europe, and um, in between the touring, I'm trying to get the next album done, which would be my 10th album. Oh my God. And the book at the same time. I was reading about your book and I was Googling it. It's been on, on the um, go since about 2005, isn't I it? I know, this book? it's been a lot of it's been my fault i've got to say um to you know i've been in this business 29 years there's a lot of memories a lot of press cuttings to go through thank god i have kept a lot of diaries and um we, we kind of made a decision me and my management that when the album's finished we're going to bring the book out at the same time because a lot of the songs i've written for the album reflect on my life and my experiences in life, which, you know, it's, it's a very honest book and a very honest album. They both kind of complement each other. So the book will be out when the album comes out in the new year. Uh, you said you kept diaries. Yes. Are those sort of like real sort of confessional type diaries or just literally the facts and figures of what you did when? Um, well, obviously there's a lot of facts and the places that I visited, but when I look at that diary, I can remember a lot of what happened around that time. The music I was listening to, to uh, the boy, the, uh, certain relationships I was in at that time, things that I've gone through. Obviously, I've had my ups and downs like most people in life. Um, it's not going to be a book where I'm going to start um, um, revealing secrets about other people. If I do, it will be done in the best possible taste and in a very <laughs> cheeky, funny way. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself, though, reading back at those diaries, singing um, your younger you? Well, just how hard I've worked, really, and, and what a true survivor I am. And I've been through a lot in my life, and I've come through it. And I've always picked myself up, dusted myself down. I've always been a very positive person, and I'm one of those. There's no such thing, no such word as can't do this, because I, I believe if everybody puts their mind to something and believes in something so strong, they can they can reach their goals in life. And I'm not one of them to give up too easily. We noticed that. We've seen. We've seen. <laughs> do you know what come across? It's knowing well, knowing you for like years, which I feel we have. Yeah. Um. You. you I think you're quite a private person but you're so honest when you do talk yeah and reading through the interviews that you you know you've done over the years the thing that neil and i were talking about is you coming out because i think that was a big shock to kind of everyone a mm. fabulous one i may add yeah yeah um, but kind of we were asking when did you first realize yeah, that when you did, were gay when did you come out to yourself um I think I kind of knew when I was very, very young. Yeah. Um, it all started with Barnet Woman, watching Barnet Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Wagner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I did have feelings from a very young age, and I guess like a lot of young people out there, you're not quite as sure. And um, because you're young, you think it's a phase you're going through. And I had great love relations. I had great love affairs with men. Um, I still love guys. You know, I hang out with guys. I love football. I love boxing. I love all the things guys love. <laughs> and I get on great with guys. You're I mean, a perfect girlfriend you for are, a bloke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I probably was. But um, and then um, I met Myra, who I've been with now, coming up for nearly 13 years. Yeah. And um, it was time for me to. I was so. so many, I was single for quite a while, on, on and off in my life. And at those times, it was because I was really not happy in the relationships that I was in. And I, I always thought there was something more and that I was missing. And when I met Myra, I just felt what true love was. And. Um, as I've said before, I'm not really into labels. I'm a great believer in the word love. And this is when I came out, this is what I said to my, my mom and my family. Look, I'm in love and I'm happy. And no one can stop that feeling. You, you cannot help that feeling. And um, it was time for me to sort of tell the truth. And I felt very secure in my career. Um, 
a lot of people said would say to me, was you scared about losing your male fans? Not really, because when I came out, a lot of my male fans had grown and they were married and relationships. And they're still my fans today. And, um, and now I have different fans, which is great. Yeah. But my original fans in the days when I was a pin-up, I still have today. Um... Well, you, I, you, I, I wasn't frightened in any way. I think by coming out and being the, saying the truth is the most important thing. Mm. What, what did your mum say then when you told her? She went, I know. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> See, oh, mum's no. Shut up! Mums Shut up! No. She said, I know, I could have told you, she said. No! What? <laughs> she said, no wonder every Christmas you wanted a Fred Perry and a pair of football boots <laughs> or, or shooting games or space invaders and... Yeah, I never asked for any floral dresses, put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> high five that, high five. And um, Sam, can I just ask one other question about that? Were you worried, because you were in that kind of industry with, when you were doing modelling, that it would hurt your hurt that? Well, no, because I gave up modelling a long time ago, and being a singer it, it is totally different. Yeah. Um, um, I still sell records all around the world, I still tour around the world. I mean, I gigged the other night, it was packed, 4,000 people, I would say 60% were guys, 40% were women, whereas the old days it would be 80% guys, 20% women. It's, I think even girls come to see me now, they're not particularly gay, but they're straight, it's because I'm a, I'm a survivor, I'm a strong woman, and I'm a good role model for women. So women can see that, that, you know, I've gone through things in my life and I've come out the other end and I'm still here. Sam, we went to the launch of the Albert Kennedy yes. uh, Act Now ad, which you had done with Ian McKellen, yes. um, Paula Grady, some incredible names. Andrew Hayden uh, Andrew Smith. Smith. Yeah. And we, we got shown um, the video, yeah. the advert, and we were like, oh my God, that's Samantha Fox! Yeah, it was, it was, it was wonderful. It was, it was the, same, the, same, the same crew, the same team, who worked with Ridley Scott and it was a wonderful experience to do and a great cause fantastic oh, cause and to work with people like Sir Ian McKellen was just amazing yeah mm. explain a little bit about your role in this because I don't I don't think people were expecting that from you <laughs> yeah well basically the Albert Kennedy Trust is it's all about anti-bullying and especially people who are gay and uh, live in a certain societies across England where they're not accepted and the, the video shows what can happen happen to gay people if they're kicked out of the family home or they're not ex um, the kids in their area start bullying them and let's let's say our poor Albert Kennedy what happened to him in the end actually killed himself through this and um, I play like so Ian McKellen plays a down and out guy um, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think. Well, I, yeah, Paul O'Grady plays a guy who lives in a council flat up north and he's, he's kind of bombarded with kids throwing things through his windows and calling him a queer and they want to beat him up and all this kind of thing. And I play a girl who's kicked out of my home and the only way I can fend for myself and, and survive is to become a prostitute. And... Um, yeah, I played a prostitute, and in, in my scene, I'm seen um, pleasuring a guy. Um, obviously, they couldn't show a lot of it. It was, no. quite, it was, quite, it was quite hard, quite hard-hitting, mm. and um, it was a great role to play. It, it was um, very dark, and, you know, it was, it was very, it really hit you, you know, when I actually saw... The footage, I was like, wow, no, it, it was it was amazing to do. And it just shows people how, you know, in life, if you're not accepted to who you are, what can happen to you? Exactly. And we're just trying to make this clear to people that, you know, we're all human beings at the end of the day and we want to be loved and we want to be accepted. Just chatting generally to you this, this morning, you, you do sound as though you're in a really good place in your life at the moment. Yeah, I am. I really am. Things are going great. Um, got a great year ahead what was the new album I'm working with some brilliant people I can tell you I'm working with it's a secret but I can tell oh, you go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I've got it written down somewhere <laughs> there is it oh yeah I'm, work I'm actually 
um, working with Ricky Wilde. I've been doing some 80s shows with um, Kim Wilde, right, who, yeah. who was like my hero as a kid. Yeah, I loved yeah. her. Kids in America. That's right. Yeah. And Ricky wrote some great songs. He's written some great songs for Kylie. And um, so he's written me two beautiful songs. Working with Bimbo Jones on a couple of tracks. Oh, wow. And Sunscreen, who was one of my favourite bands in the 90s. Um, Andy Gray he used to partner up with Paul Oakenfold <laughs> doing a duet with Boy George what yeah Sam <laughs> whoa, whoa back up sister I oh, know I love him I mean we just get we go back a long way and we just get on well we just keep tweeting each other we've just got to get together and do a track together he writes some beautiful tracks he, he's somebody else who's had his ups and downs because we interviewed him uh, earlier this year and he's yeah. he's somebody who seems to be in a really good place now as well he is know? he is in a yeah. good place George he really is Really so that's is. the. Si have you recorded the single yet with him? No, we've not recorded it. We're writing it at the moment. He's writing his bits. I'm writing my bits, and then hopefully we're going to get together and work it all out and record it. Um, no, I'm really looking forward to that. So are we. <laughs> no, and uh, no, I'm looking forward. I've got like 50 dates in France already set up next year. Mm. America. Um, hopefully Great Britain. Yeah, because people probably don't realise just how big you are huge. across Europe and around other parts of the world. I know, especially um, m most of my, I say 60% of my fan mail comes from the States still, which is quite amazing. Wow. Re vis a vis the States, can I ask you of uh, what you think of people like Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman, who have recently gone on about gay cures and they've been really, you know, oh. really down. What do you, What do you think when you hear crap like that being spouted from politicians' mouths? I don't go what a load of crap yeah um i mean did you hear about the story the other day about the 14 year old boy who got kicked out of school in texas the yeah. cheerleader yeah for kissing, for kissing, a, another, kissing guy. another boy yeah. yeah unbelievable yeah just unbelievable um yeah um uh, it's just i mean carl we're in the 20th century i think people have just the bible was written a long long time ago mm. you know and we've all <laughs> so many things have changed since that Bible was written, you know what I mean? In life and in society. Yeah. And the word, all I can say is love. You cannot diss that. Exactly. I think if you ask God, would you rather me be in love or in a, in a relationship I was unhappy in or an abusive relationship or one that you know, made me cry every night because I was upset that I was married to somebody because I had to be. Yeah. Um, because there's still lots of religions where there's these arranged marriages and all these kind of things. And you think, I don't think God would want this for people. Surely he would want people to love each other. Alert about music.